big things in your book, what's the ultimate food upgrade and even an anti-aging food that's a, that's a drug almost? I, I've coined the term in superhuman, it, I call it energy fats. And go a little bit deeper than, than you might think. And I, I like to think it's a readable way, talking about, okay, when you eat a fat, what is it going to do to the composition of your cells? And, and we like to say, oh, I drew my, my red blood cells and I had this much omega-3 and omega-6. But what your brain does, what your white fat around your middle does, and what the fat that, that's the cells in your heart or in your muscle tissue and your nerves, it doesn't all do the same thing when you eat something. So the fat is both a building block and a fuel source. But there's a unique kind of fat, these energy fats, that only convert to energy and they do it with more energy than sugar does and they don't get stored in the body in any any meaningful way and there's a broad category called medium chain fats some or medium chain triglycerides some medium chain triglycerides have that special energy fat however the most common and affordable medium chain fat lauric acid doesn't actually do that correct so the one i recommend i made it popular is brain octane it's part of bulletproof coffee and this is the one that in studies from uc san diego raises ketones higher than anything else even if you had some rice or some sugar the night before which isn't always a good idea a little bit of carbs not a problem Right? You don't have to be on a zero carb diet forever. Just don't be on bonker sugar diet. But if you put these energy fats in your coffee in the morning, you pour it on your salad at lunch, what happens is your energy levels go up in a very noticeable, profound way. And when your ketones boost a little bit in your blood, there's two things that really shift. One is called CCK, and this is the satiety fullness hormone. And the other one is called ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. So if you get your ketones up to 0.48, which is below the, the keto bro nutritional ketosis, I haven't had any carbs in a year kind of guys, um, what, what you're going to get is your CCK goes up and your ghrelin goes down and all of a sudden you don't care about the bagel and the willpower you think it takes to skip breakfast is gone. You do, there's no willpower. And if you pour that stuff in your coffee in the morning, the bagel loses its siren call at 1030. You don't want the bran muffin. You just don't care. If someone puts it in front of you, the big Krispy Kreme donuts, you're like, yeah, I, just, I, I have no desire for this, which is a very different thing than my 300 pound life where I'd sit there in the meeting and go, I am a good person. I am going to resist this donut with all of my willpower. And then I'm like, I'll just have half the donut. Right? And you, you will lose if this is how you're doing it. And, and that's the secret there is if you learn intermittent fasting, make metabolic flexibility, or use energy fats, you don't have to think about food all the time. You mean so I don't have to have a personal mantra, I'm not a person that eats bread? I just go, I am one with the donut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's quickly hit some of the more out there topics you explore in the book. Ozone therapy, what the heck is that? Are you at from the ozone, ozone layer? Are we depleting our ozone? <laughs> we are not depleting our ozone with the ozone therapy. This is an up and coming thing that is undeniably effective that is, is going to take the world of medicine by storm over the next five years. It's just, it's been around for, geez, since World War I when we first started using ozone to treat infections in wounds. And ozone as a gas, if you breathe it, will make you cough, retch, throw up, or die if you breathe a lot of it. It, it is really, really noxious. It's also that beautiful smell after a rainstorm. It's all about the dose. So what you do with ozone therapy is you introduce ozone into the blood, into the vagina, into the rectum, or even just against the skin with cupping, and it has broad spectrum antimicrobial, so the antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral properties, but it does something very interesting. That your mitochondria are sitting there, and when they see ozone, ozone is a signaling molecule that tells them, hey, make more antioxidants. And the mitochondria that are not capable of making more antioxidants those are the old weak ones. And you know what they do? They die. They get out of dodge and fresh new young ones form in something called uh, uh, mitochondrial uh, autophagy. The old ones die and get replaced. Or mitobiogenesis or mitogenesis are the other terms for that. So what I'm saying here is that for people like me who had toxic mold poisoning or Lyme disease or aging, <laughs> at regular exposure in a medical setting to 
ozone will tell your cells in a, in a very strong way, like an intermittent or like a high intensity interval training, like a strong exercise for your cell membranes. This is something that brought me back from serious brain fog, from mold poisoning. And I have seen thousands of people who are really ill, as well as people who just use it prophylactically. For me, I get off an airplane, I come home and I do ozone therapy. And you know what? It tells my cells, here's some oxygen, here's some extra electrons, and you better behave yourselves. And if not, get out of the way. Wow. So, uh, so cupping, that uh, odd uh, practice, uh, increases ozone, huh? Well, cupping only works if, they're, if you're pumping ozone into cupping, ah. uh, into the cup itself. So you can have a cup with an ozone tube coming off a generator. And it, this sounds like, Dave, what are you talking about? My daughter had an infection on the outer part of her ear. She scratched it on a rose bush. Her ear was three times its normal size. You don't want to take antibiotics if you can avoid them, but you do want to take them to save your life. It's one of those things. Good you point. Overuse Good it. point. So we did ozone cupping. So we, we took a funnel, <laughs> attached a hose to it, and ran a small amount of ozone to it, ran a, a, a fan on her so she wouldn't have to breathe any little, little escape things. And she sat there watching Netflix for 20 minutes, three times. Infection totally cleared. She was literally going to go to urgent care and get antibiotics. And it, it, it resolves that quickly. Deep wounds, burn healing, and it has been pioneered even for things like tuberculosis, drug-resistant diseases, but it's pioneered in Cuba and Russia, places that are not really cool in the West. And they did it because they didn't have access to antibiotics and they found a way. Fortunately, it's old, but it's well studied. All right, how about taking boron for stem cells? I mean, 20 mule team borax, or what, what's going on here? <laughs> it turns out that stem cell exhaustion is one of the seven pillars of aging. And that the deal is, if you look in, in superhuman, there's just seven things that now we understand are, are happening with aging. And think about your car. If you were to change the tires regularly, but you're not the oil, your car is not gonna last very long. You change only the oil, but not the tires, you gotta do all of them at least a little bit. You don't have to be perfect there. And as we age, we start losing tissues because we run out of stem cells and the stem cells aren't very good. So what if you could prop up and enhance and make your stem cells healthier? It turns out there are studies showing boron can do this. And there are different forms of it, but yeah, the, the 20 mule team borax is not food grade, but you can get food grade boron supplements that are better, but there are people who use, uh, for instance, a borax bath, and there are even borax uh, suppositories for yeast infections in women, uh, vaginal suppositories, that are noticeably effective, but those aren't the best ways to get it. So I would say look at a boron supplement because the studies show if you want your stem cells to be around 20 years from now, you're gonna need some boron, plus bone density is always your friend and you need boron for that too. Yeah, I've been uh, taking a boron supplement for many years now. So uh, yeah, good. and thank you for pointing that out in Superhuman, because uh, good trick.